Hi guys, um, welcome to a very belated My Top 11 of 2011. Basically this is products that I've absolutely loved this year. Um, I've used them a lot and things that I would definitely repurchase. Um, it's in no particular order, um, but it, yeah, it's just a bit of makeup, a bit of skincare, some fragrance, things like that. Um, yeah, it's been quite hard to do this because there's lots of things I've kind of liked um, for the moment, but then you think, would I repurchase this? Because there might be something better out there. But no, these are products that I actually have loved and I will definitely repurchase. So we'll get started. First up, we'll start with skincare. Now, I've used lots of skincare products that I've liked this year, um, but um, yeah, it's all been much of a muchness in some degree, but there's only what there's one that's definitely stood out to me, and it is this. It is the Alpha H Gentle Daily Exfoliator. Um, what it is, this, this is the best way to do it because you don't spill as much. I don't know how well you can see that. It's basically, it's white grainy powder. You mix it with water or with the cleanser, and it basically it forms a type of scrub. Um, I love this, it's gentle, it's not harsh. Um, my skin feels amazingly soft when I've used it. Um, yeah, really good product. I got this as part of a TSV on QVC to do a special value, but this is de definitely something I will repurchase. Um, I'd also consider purchasing the Alpha Ridge Liquid Gold, which was narrowly, um, yeah, narrowly missed out on the top 11. But I really like this product. And once I've used up all my millions of facial exfoliators, exaggeration, I think, um, that I have to use up, then I'll definitely buy this one again. Next up, we'll go for some body care, I think, now. Now, body care. Now, these two products here that I've basically picked for this part of my best body care products of 2011, basically, these were prominent at the beginning of the year, particularly. Um, as you know, last January, I bought my ankle and my skin by the time i had my cast off my skin was dry hideous um i still had i've obviously got a scar where i had my operation um but i think these two products have really made a difference um and they're now products that i use all year round generally now first of all there is the body shop cocoa butter moisturizing stick now i have to apologize for the appearance of this one it being cold it was a bit hard so I put it on the radiator, soften a bit, and I forgot about it. So it's ended up looking a bit like that. Yeah, you do need to soften this a bit. Um, but I've been. I, what I did was I used to soften it a bit. Just, I mean, just put it on the radiator for like a warm radiator for a couple of minutes, and it's a lot softer. Obviously, I left it too long. Yeah. Um, and I basically I applied this to my scar. Um, I've applied this to elbows, knees, feet you name it where i've put this create this stick and it's all supposed, supposed to be really good for stretch marks um i really like this body shop cocoa butter and it goes without saying the body shop cocoa butter body butter try saying that quickly i love body shop body butters um but this has to be probably my favorite as i've said numerous times on here palmer's cocoa butter is too sickly for me it smells far too sickly to use everywhere. This doesn't, this has got a gentle sort of vanilla -y smell. Um, ultra creamy, it's one of my go-to body moisturizers. Um, smells gorgeous. Close runner up in this was uh, Elemis Milk Bath, um, which I love. Elemis Skin Nourishing Hand and Body Lotion, which I love. And Body Shop, what's it called? creamy cocoa butter body wash the body wash they were runners up but these are the two products that i've really turned to again and again for, for body skin care this year next up um a budget product products in a budget i think i've just tipped some on the quilt but never mind it's not my room um yeah super drug nourishing nail polish remover um yeah i've this was quite a recent product um in the favorites but it's something I've actually used for a little while now. Um, it doesn't smell horrible. Um, a lot of nail polish removers, can, especially, especially the acetone free ones, can smell really, really strong. And as I say, it won't, don't advocate sniffing nail polish remover. But it's got a kind of 
a sort of a powdery sort of fresh after smell so you don't really smell nail varnish remover as much as with some and i think this is about 139 um i'm just out with this one but i've got to back up and i have to say um i won't buy expensive ones again this does the job for me um and it even takes glitter off with perseverance um next product was something that came in one of the beauty boxes um I still subscribe to most of the beauty boxes on the market at the minute in the UK um, and I've just kind of signed up to the new one she said so we'll see um, I'm definitely going to be cancelling some of them it's just deciding which ones I'm going to cancel now forgive me it might have been glossy box it could have been glossy box with this one um, and it is the L'Oreal Mythic Hair Oil um, not that you can tell from today it just looks in the mirror my hair is a bit of a freaky fly away mess um, I have tried to straighten it today, believe it or not, but it's just not having anything. Um, but this product is beautiful. I love this product. Um, as I say, I'm, it's something that came in a beauty box, not something I would have purchased. I would have probably gone for Moroccan oil or something like that. But yeah, just a light oil. What I like about this, because basically what I use, I, I easily use it on damp hair, um or i just run it through the ends specifically the ends and over the top just to add a bit of shine and what i like about this it's not i mean although you can see some sort of sheen on my hand it's not heavy and it's not overly greasy which sounds strange for an oil but it's not it has quite a, a sort of smooth texture but it does seem to absorb quite quickly and there's no like horrible after um sort of residue left but yeah, that's a definite repurchase. I think this is about £12, but it's something I'll definitely repurchase. Um, next up, fragrance. Now, first of all, I'll include one that's not in my two thousand uh, top 11 of 2011 because it's in my top what products of all time. And I can't... I, can't, I will never stop loving or wearing this perfume while I can still get my hands on a bottle of it. And it is the original Giorgio Armani Aqua Di Gio. I've worn this for years. People recognise this as Louise. Um, yeah, but um, it's discontinued. They brought Aqua Di Gio, Gio, whatever. And it's not as nice. I don't like it, um, which is such a shame. I have a quite uh, I have about five bottles of this in backup kept in a cool dark place so I'm just hoping that don't go off because this is my signature fragrance and why our money have stopped selling this in the UK I really don't know but it's a big mistake um I love it I love this perfume so this isn't actually in the top 11 but it doesn't need to be because it's my favorite and it always will be but in the desperate attempt to try and find something new I've gone for and two fragrances here one is Marc Jacobs Daisy um, as you can see I haven't got very much of this one left I think I'll have a little squirt now I do have a backup I think I've got Blooms which is the one with the green petals and the stickers um, but what's not a love about this fragrance um, Violets um, Raspberry I think that's in it the Violets dominate for me it's a lovely fruity floral and it's really nice um, the floral probably dominates in this one. I've recently picked up Daisy, um, Daisy Oh So Fresh, which is more of a, a sort of a fr uh, fruity fragrance. But I love this. Definitely one of my favourites. Next up, it's something that is also a favourite. Something I purchased. I'm, I've actually used this quite sparingly because I've got about 12, 14 perfumes on the go at once. Yeah, I'm bad at I do, it's, it's just something that's I've really got into over the last year or so fragrance and this one I love and it will definitely be a repurchase and it is Vivian Westwood Naughty Alice um, it's powdery it's quite soft but there's quite a sensual edge under it at the same time mmm love it there's a new one coming out I'm led to believe next month called Cheeky Alice so I can't wait to smell that and see what that one's like that's got like a sort of orangey colour packaging as opposed to the turquoise. Um, so yeah, definitely like that. No Alice. Right, what else? Oh yes, we're down to makeup. Now, I've got, f well, five makeup items to show you, but f um, two of them are classed as one. So we'll start with those. Yeah, the double C's, Chanel. Um, these are Illusion d'Ombre's. Illusion d'Ombre, maybe. 
haven't done French for a long, long time. Anyway, um, these have actually took the blogosphere by and YouTube by storm. Everybody who's tried these pretty much loves these. Um, and I can see why. The first one I got, which is the one you've seen, is Emma Veal, which is number 82. It looks a bit mank once you've had your fingers and you brush it. Um, it's basically a soft peachy pinky gold. That's what it looks like there. I hope you can see them. If the, the lighting's a bit dodgy in here because if the blinds are open, it's too light, and if it's not, it's too dark. Um, so yeah, that's Emma Veal. And for Christmas, I also got Illusoire, Illusoire, which is that one. I'll show you a bit better. Right. I'll swatch that for you as well. No, that's what that one looks like. I love these. The t I have to admit, I'm a total fan of cream shadows anyway. Despite the fact they tend to crease, I use them as bases or, you know, bases for other colours. Um, colour all over the lid and something just chucked in the crease. I love these colours. Um, I love the texture. The texture is amazing. They actually last. They're really pretty. Um, only trouble is they're really expensive. I think those are about £22. Something like that. Very expensive. Chanel is expensive. Yes, we know Chanel's expensive, but hey ho. Um, I definitely got to pick some more of these up in 2012. Um, Epitante is on my wish list, but it, it all sold out before Christmas. So, yes. Love these. I believe really, there was a problem with the machine um, that produces them because the Chanel, Soleilish, Tandy Chanel, the Bronze Universal, the, that wasn't produced before Christmas either and they said it was a problem with the machine. So we'll see. I'm hoping to pick that up this year as well. Now, next three products are all palettes. And um, I've used a lot of single eyeshadows this year. Um, don't get me wrong, I love single eyeshadows. There's a lot in my collection that I really like. But at the end of the day, when you're in a rush or when you can't be bothered, a palette is much easier because everything in the palette will probably work together. Naked. I think this is the second year this has appeared in my uh, end of year favourites. And I love this. Now, I have to say, mine isn't looking as bad as some people's is, but that doesn't mean that I haven't used it. Um, the pigmentation in these shadows is actually quite strong. Um, my favourite colours are the sparkly, the glittery ones. I like toasted. I like I've got toasted on today. I like sidecar sin, virgin. I've used a lot. A um, little bit of dark horse. In the, I've used and a tiny bit of creep and guns and gun metal, which I've used. I've actually used a lot of gun metal this year. I really like that color. Um, I do actually have two. I did get naked two. Um, yeah, if you're on Debenham's Facebook, the night naked two launched or Twitter. Yeah, you'll know that that was a laugh. <laughs> um, but yes, I did pick Naked, up, Naked 2 up when it launched this month. And I have to say, I am really liking it. Um, it's not going to be in my January favourites, because I haven't given it enough love as yet. But I will. Um, but as I say, Naked 1 is lovely. Um, you can tell I've used it because it's actually looking a bit mank on the outside. I definitely prefer the packaging of Naked 2, I've got to say. But yeah, lovely palette. Really like it. The pencil is okay even though mine desperately needs sharpening so i'm not going to show you but yeah really like that palette if you love neutrals buy naked if you love neutrals maybe this is why naked hasn't been used as much this year is mua makeup academy professional eyeshadow palette and this is heaven and earth wow if you can't afford naked um buy this basically um, fair enough, it hasn't got some of the grey tones in it, but it has all the neutrals you could ever wish to see. Um, these are amazingly good. Um, I mean, the pigmentation is... Pig, pigmentation is amazing. They are so soft, they're so buttery. There are a few matte shades in there, but they are predominantly shimmers. But um, this is a lovely palette, and I, actually, from when I got this... I, to be honest, I didn't touch Naked for a while. It's only in the past two, three months I've actually got back into Naked this year. So it was a late entry this year. But um, ooh, but I love this. I love this palette. Definitely recommend it. Just pick, pick my little brush up. I won't put it back in because it needs a brushing anyway. But definitely recommend um, MUA Professional Palettes. That's why I recommend this one as well. 
which is the MUA um, Immaculate Collection palette. This was the big one that they released before Christmas. Um, how many colours? 6, 12, 24. 24? Yeah, 24. Now, that's the colours. You get a mixture of mattes and, and um, shimmers, obviously. I mean, these are beyond beautiful. Just watch on that one. That's just the pink. Aren't they beautiful? I mean, I'm going to take that one now because that one needs washing as well. I do sometimes use them if I'm in a real brush and I can't find a brush or something. But I have to say the pigmentation for these is amazing and they're just so worth the money. If you're interested in seeing more on the Makeup Academy Professional range, I have got a blog post coming up in the next month um, all about the range and about the products, reviews, swatches and things like that. So check out my blog for that. I'll put the details below. So they were my 11 favourite items of 2011. Um, I have to say, love them all. Um, loved a few more things besides, but yeah, it couldn't be the top 12 or 13 of 2011. So, um, but that's the things I liked. A um, couple of little contenders already for 2012, um, which you'll see in my favourites video next month, next month, next week. Um, but yeah, definitely. It, I don't think it was a vintage year for... Um, for a lot of makeups and things. I used a lot of foundations. I liked a lot of foundations in 2011, but nothing screamed, I love you. I'm still looking for the sort of my Holy Grail foundation. Um, so I'd love to hear your recommendations. I'm pretty pasty. Um, my skin is, I'm 33 and my skin is combination to oily. I'm prone to break out some of my T-zone and oil on my forehead and nose in particular. So I want something that'll stick but I don't want anything too heavy or cakey because I've done all that. So I just want something that will give an, a decent amount of coverage but not be cakey. So leave me a message if you can think of something. So yeah, um, any questions on anything? I'd love to know what your favourite products of 2011 were so please leave me a comment below and let me know. And don't forget to check out my giveaway as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week with my January favourites. Bye!